the first thing I'm going to do when the model gets back is I check my measurements to, to find out um, if everything is basically in the same uh, arrangement and pose. So don't immediately just start drawing in and, don't, and not check your, your pose. Sometimes you might be, you might find the need to kind of just look and analyze a certain area for like a minute or two before you actually start making marks to make sure things line up the way they should. We've got five total class sessions on this, so this isn't a race. Make a general reference for the all right, but all the marks I'm going to make inside this shadow were very, very subtle because I want to maintain clarity on where the light and the shadow divide. lightly I'm going to put a line in right here to give myself a reference. It's basically on both edges of that highlight that's running across her head. It gives me a reference on where my major <coughs> plane change is coming in. And right here is the very top of that cheekbone. So just through very light, just light enough to see so I can use it later on again as a reference. I see that highlight you can see running across the edge of the nose. That's basically kind of like the way this um, edge of the shadow is coming in. That's showing you where your plane change is coming in from front plane of the nose to side plane of the nose. That's why I'll give that a reference. So you just randomly put down those highlights, you're going to lose clarity in the end of the drawing with the form. is actually covering the ear now, which actually I think is kind of better than it was before, so I'm just going to go with that. There's that nice kind of gestural curve that comes in for the hair. some of the shadow so I don't get too caught up on details on you know, some of the smudging. So 
So I think I'm going to leave it right about here for my block in. On Wednesday, we're going to get into color with this. I can see now I've got enough of a reference down to know what's light, what shadow, which can help me make decisions later on about what I'm going to do with color. shape of light it's on the mouth. Like I said, the likeness really isn't completely there yet because I have to really get into some of these subtleties, what's happening right here and right here, and model more of that side of plane change on the side of the head, but that's something I can do once I start adding um, color. So, our... Um, are there any questions? Because we're going to start, uh, I'm going to have you guys start with your uh, block in. Yeah? No? Nope. Okay. So that means that I expect everybody's drawing to be pretty top notch by the end of the day. Like I said, you can just use the <laughs> All right. So, in general, I have cool shadow in relation to the warm light and my first priority is I'm going to say well I need to get something that's in the darker valued range not pure black because obviously the hair is darker in a lot of parts than the shadow on the head but something that's uh, a darker value and kind of shifts in the cool direction as far as I can find I can just use the side to uh, test some of the colors this is like a dark reddish violetish color which sort of goes in the cool direction towards towards red. What I'm not doing right now is worrying about whether this is um, the colors I'm picking are skin tone colors. I'm just thinking what are the aspects of color that I see there from a broad point of view. shadow is clearly darker than the light mass up here. The darkest part of the dark mass, or the shadow mass though, would be the hair right here. So I'm going to start finding myself moving back and forth between these areas. And this little red reflecting um, color that's coming in, I'm probably going to reference that a little bit later in the drawing. I'm not going to go and try to nail it right from the beginning. So. still kind of thinking in terms of um, the form, so you can kind of notice my marks are sort of um, chiseling out changes in form. There's the ear that comes in, and if anything I'm going to err on the side of being a little too dark rather than a little too light. Obviously if I look in this area I can see there's a little bit more of a value range, but Right now I'm just trying to clarify it's dark and in relation to the light it's a little on the cooler side. If you look real close you'll notice a lot of, of the reflecting lights in the shadow are kind of shifting towards a bluish tone. And I'm going to draw that into, my, the way I'm thinking is I'm going to draw that into what I'm putting down right now. I'm going to draw that into it later on. So these marks I'm making are not, in terms of the direction, uh, they're not being made arbitrarily. I'm, I'm thinking about how they're going with the form. And this area of the mouth, 
I'm not stopping right at the edge of the lip just because I know it's there. If I look at the edges of the mouth that are in shadow, the edges are very subtle. So I don't want to overemphasize it. And I'm kind of taking the point of view that I'm leaving the tone of the surface as my light mass as long as I can. So that's why I'm leaving this area of the lip, the tone of the, um, of the board. Right here, basically, it curves around that eye socket. I'm also thinking about pressure I'm putting on the pastel as well. I'm basically putting a pressure like this. I'm not going like that, all right? Because I want some of the value I put down with the pencil to kind of work for me as best I can. I want to exploit it as much as I can. It's sort of a similar concept to oil painting in the sense that I'm, when I'm putting a mark down like this, I'm sort of working in a transparent to semi-transparent kind of manner, meaning I'm letting some of that underneath tone show through. I've probably said this before, but every four to five seconds, your eyes should constantly look back up at the, uh, at the subject you're drawing. If you go longer than that, you're going to start forgetting really what was in front of you. darks here and the, the hair in shadow kind of shifts towards a dark bluish violetish kind of tone so I'm gonna find a mixture that gets me there. I'm probably gonna use a combination of this blue and this black with possibly combinations of what I just put down but I'm gonna decide that as I move ahead. I think a big mistake to make right now would be to say, well, the hair is dark. Let me make it evenly the same value all the way down. If I look very carefully, I notice that some areas are getting hit with light and some are not. So it's not the exact same value all the way down. saying earlier, I make a few marks, I stop and kind of assess how it's affecting the overall drawing. And I'm sort of thinking ahead right now as well. I can tell if anything, I'm putting this blue down, which is cooling off the shadow in the, around the hair, but to a certain extent, if I left it that way, it'd probably be too much blue. So I'm already thinking ahead that I'm going to come back in a later pass and alter that a little bit and shift it a little more towards violet as I work ahead. Especially right in here, we'll get a lot of reflecting violet. And I pretty much have my basic proportions laid down, but if I find that I'm off somewhere as I'm moving ahead, then I'm going to make the necessary change for the proportions and the, um, and the shape. So I am, in the, to a certain degree, still analyzing that my shapes are where they need to be, my alignments are where they need to be. And I want to make sure that I always keep clear where's the light, where's the shadow. Because even though it's not done right now, 
it's pretty obvious that the light's coming from above and all of this is in light and here's your shadow. So. And I'm going to make a reference to the background which will help me in the future deal with these warmer parts of the hair that are in front of it. And the background is basically a blue that's more intense than the hair. And don't feel um, intimidated by the design that's on the drapery in the background. Um, you, I'm not expecting you, with the time we have, to get all of those little you know, lines and um, changes in the design. Just think about that drapery in the background as you know, variations in value and temperature and intensity. If you have time to get some of the design, then that's fine, but don't feel obligated to do it. Keep your focus on your big, big shapes. Obviously, I'm putting this blue down, and I can tell there are variations in the blue. This is just the first pass. I don't want you to think that it's being put down just because I think the whole thing is just this even blue. It's clearly not. But it's a starting point to help me make decisions right here, which will help me make just further decisions when I move back into the blue. of relativity, you can kind of tell, you know, I put this uh, violet uh, pastel down here, it looks darker. I start to go over here, it starts to look lighter. I'm, I don't know if that's coming up on the camera. You can come up to the, close to the drawing and see it. Um, but constantly compare how one color works in one area versus another, because it's not always the same. Depends on what's around it. Here I have this reflecting light coming in. And I want to be careful when I start drawing in this reflecting light because I don't want to make it end up putting so much pressure on the pastel that it becomes too light. So that's why I'm making marks that are just kind of skimming the surface and I'm kind of going in the direction of that sternocleidoid mastoid muscle that kind of curves over. I 
And as I put this down, I can tell, well, it's kind of cooling off some of these reflecting areas a little bit, but it's probably still needs more adjustment as I move ahead. So I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do in a second and third pass. Right now I'm just kind of adjusting the value slightly and subtly introducing some more cool reflection into it. Kind of tell I'm moving around all over the drawing. I'm not getting fixated on one area. And the one advantage of the pastel board is if you put down a color, it doesn't work. It's pretty easy to draw back over it, a little easier than it is on regular paper. We have still four total class or total sessions left on this drawing today, and three more. So don't uh, don't rush it. Reference a little bit of what's happening in the eye in terms of the darker darks, and I really emphasize that it's a little bit of what's happening in there. I'm not trying to put everything I see in the eye. I'm putting the most noticeable parts. I don't see every part of the contour. Parts that are most noticeable to me are the ones I want to put in. Eyebrow is dark, but don't make the mistake of making it jet black. It's just darker in relation to what's around it. Subtle reference to the nostril. Not too much of one. And the nostril on the other side is kind of deeper in shadow, so I'm not going to try and give it too much of an outline either. notice as I make changes here, what I've done for the top lip could probably, I might be able to get away with keeping that first pass in that area the way it is. I not have to do much changing, but I won't make that decision for sure until I work farther into the, um, farther into the shadow. This area could probably now, I could go back and work it a little darker and then pull in some of that reflecting light in just a second. And 
I have a lot of contrast in this shadow in terms of there's a lot of variations, a lot of temperature shift, and even though it's dominantly a cool shadow, there's still some areas that are a little cooler than others. There's, you know, value shifts. That's why I'm giving so much attention to it. And another thing I'm thinking about that I'm kind of gradually working towards is the variation in edges. I don't see equal edges all around, but I'm kind of working up to the more prominent hard edges rather than trying to make everything too even or too hard. <coughs> And the tendency sometimes, because there's that red reflecting coming up, the tendency is to make it a lot lighter than it actually is. If you look really close at the red reflection under her chin, it's still a lot darker than what's going on in the light mass. It's really, um, in that area, a temperature shift and an intensity shift more than a dominant value shift. So I'm taking a more intense, uh, darker valued red. And like with anything else, I'm not going to attempt to nail that reflecting light right at the beginning. I'm just getting myself started. And you might be surprised that you, you find out that you end up not using as many different colors as you might think you would. You just use varying degrees of a limited amount, because right now I've only used, what, three different, four different sticks? Just a second, I might make a reference to the half tones of the light mass. And I don't want to mislead anybody into thinking that I'm trying to bring the shadow to an area where I'm never going to touch it again. I'm just trying to work it up as much as possible before I start trying to put in too many <coughs> light valued areas in, in, ter in terms of the light mass. jaw line has to be really carefully put to put in because it's not as hard, hard edged as you might uh, first think. It's definitely prominent and noticeable, but it's got a subtle transition in terms of edges. I'm going to reference a little bit of what's happening in the transition area into the light um, for the uh, half tones. But like I said, I'm going to avoid the lighter lights for today and deal with those in the next class. So this side, if I compare the two sides of the head, this side is slightly darker than that side. <clears throat> and if I look right here where the um, light and dark meet, it's kind of a dark half tone. It's uh, on the. It's much warmer than what's happening in the um, shadow. So as soon as I put this in, I'll have a reference to know how much cooler should I make this shadow. Does it need to be a lot more or just a little bit more? I'm still taking the strategy of working from darks gradually, slowly towards lights. <clears throat> Like 
before my marks are kind of sculpting over. And to get that transition, sometimes I just kind of subtly taper onto that edge where the light and dark meet to keep it from being uh, too hard or too soft. I want to have to be really careful that I don't end right at the um, where the light and dark meet and then make the edge too hard or that I don't go over it too much to where it blends it away. If you have to, you can always practice to the side of your drawing board and mixing two colors to get the feel for how much pressure to put down in each area because not all the edges are the same. Just like with any other form, there's variety as it changes. front plane of the head so my marks are going to go in this kind of slightly horizontal direction and then shift downward to the side plane. 